Well, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, you know, if I had a football game, y'all couldn't be in my team. Because we're talking about Jesus. You know, one of the favorite scriptures that God has given me, he said, rejoice not because the devil are subject unto you. He said, rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Now, let me see who all name is written in heaven, huh? Hallelujah! Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we just, uh, will you please stand for one minute, please? In the name of Jesus, we pray that the glory of God, that we bless everyone, especially our leaders, that's over Flint, Michigan, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord. Come on, I want y'all to intercede, pray right now. In the name of Jesus. Y'all speak in tongues, you make some noise. In the name of Jesus, Father, touch all of Flint, Michigan. Let it be a spark to all of Michigan, and let it be a spark to the nation. In the name of Jesus, you have special people in this moment right now. In the name of Jesus, I just believe that we are healthy, wealthy, and wise in Jesus' name. I believe it, Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. And bless all the ministers and pastors, apostles, prophets, and the evangelists in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Let's lift our hands up on the for you today. We have a lot to be thankful for. We see our main supporter, Sheriff Mikel, is here today. We're so thankful for him. We're thankful for all those that serve on the uh, prayer chain day planning committee. Pastor Tom, Pastor Rhonda, we have Sister Gail, we have uh, Pastor Bizzle and Apostle Bizzle. They're all just integral parts of this prayer chain day. We're just so thankful for all the work that they put in to diligently pull this off every year. This is our 16th year. Let's hear it for that. Praise God. Praise God. We're so happy that you're here today. You're going to hear some of the most dynamic speakers that we have in the city of Flint. And we are going to bring the heavens down today, right? Today is the day that the Lord has made, so let's be glad and rejoice, right? We will rejoice in it today. And we're all here today because we can agree on one thing for sure. Flint needs prayer. Flint needs you. Flint needs me. We need to, as Evangelist Geneva likes to say, get out of the seats and into the streets and evangelize. We need to do that. So I have a special message that she recorded for you. I'm going to play it right now. Praise the Lord, saints. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out today, doing the work of the Lord. As it say in Psalms 133:1, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And that's what you're doing today, is dwelling to together and doing the work of the Lord. I'll be praying for you all. I can't be there today, but I'll be praying, standing in agreement with you because you are wise and you know those who win souls to the Lord are wise and you have a blessed 
and a holy day. May God be with you. We want to acknowledge Evangelist Geneva and our late sister Janet McKell. They were the founders of this event. Amen. They had a heart for Flint. And you know what? You have a heart for Flint because you are here today. You love Flint. You love God. And we're here together today. We stand in unity for this city. And we want great things to happen as a result of today. So uh, just a couple of reminders. Today's uh, prayer rally is going to be about an hour here in the front lawn of City Hall. It'll be followed by a prayer ride. If you're so inclined, we'll give you a flag to stick on your car, and you can parade up and down Saginaw Street or wherever you want to go. Come back here at 2 o'clock. That's when we're going to have the raffle drawing for the door prizes. You may have received a ticket for that. You have to be present at 2 o'clock in order to win that. So we need you to uh, go out on that prayer ride. If you want to stay back here at City Hall and pray while those folks are out on the prayer ride, that's great, too. This is a day of prayer. This is a day of outreach. And to God be all the glory. Because it is not about me. It is not about us. It's about Jesus Christ. Can I hear it? Yes. 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 All right. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mayor Neely to say a few words. Good morning. Good morning. This is another great day God has brought us together for an amazing event, the prayer day. This is the 16th annual Prayer day. Give it a round of applause for the founders of this. You know, God is moving in all of us, and we definitely must act, you know, act in accordance with His will. You know, I invited you here many, many times, but this is the first time I believe that you're in the front of City Hall line, so people can witness the greatness of God and what He's doing in all of us. I'm grateful for many things today, but I'm really grateful for this jacket I got. You know what I'm this, this is a blessing. This is a blessing. You know, it was about 55 years ago that people were on City Hall line right here. We were talking about soft segregation in our community. And we had to come together and overcome some challenges by coming together as one, right? And so we've done that. We overcame that by law. But today we're going to overcome many things and many challenges that we have in our society. We, we need God moving through our community and the artery of our community with our, our lives and our spirit and our soul. We have to lift it up in prayer today. You know, 1 Corinthians 14 and uh, 33, you know, it says God is not the author of confusion but of peace, as all the churches can say. So, so we're going to come together today in prayer, and I welcome you to the People's Building here at City Hall. Thank you all, and God bless you. Thank you, Mayor Neely. Now, uh, representing the Patel family, I want to invite Judge the Honorable Brian Patel to give us a few words. Thank you very much, Pastor Beck. Well, hello and good afternoon, everybody. I want to give a special shout out to uh, Ms. Geneva Spears. And, and uh, what a, what a uh, godly woman of the faith she is and has been. And along with the uh, group of wonderful pastors we have Amen. here, God has so graciously blessed us Amen. with them. And um, indeed, we are fortunate beyond measure to have been able to call them our own. What another fabulous Michigan fall day God has provided right. us, huh? That's right. You all look so beautiful out there. Mm -hmm. Why not? We all were made in the image and likeness of God. To our holy God to reflect his glory. And I just feel honored, privileged, and uh, to be standing here before you to be a part of a prayer chain day. I know you were expecting my father to speak today and for, for good reason. If I'm not mistaken, Dad, you have spoken every year since the inception of the event. Okay. Yeah. And uh, he's still here sit, sitting, uh, sitting over there. And on behalf of each of us, I just want to thank you for um, all of the dedication, commitment, and uh, loyalty to Prayer Chain Day and for dutif dutifully and um, faithfully representing our family, especially, especially mom. Uh, and lastly, uh, uh, my dad celebrated his 81st birthday last oh, week. Yeah. All right. Happy birthday, Dad. We love you very much. All right. My yes, mom, it'll be nine years since her passing this, this November. So time is really going fast. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it's probably been Wait 10 years one. since since she attended uh, her last uh, prayer chain day. And we miss her dearly, especially that radiant smile and, and the overwhelming excitement and joy that she had when it came to this day. She loved all of you very, very much and would be so thrilled to witness this and be with you here today. I also remember fondly how deeply and genuinely she cared for that building across the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unconditionally loved, loved and had compassion for the inmates housed in it. She had a calling and huge soft heart for the incarcerated in our community. As you know, located right next to the jail, we have our circuit court just a few blocks up Saginaw, we have our district court. These buildings, of course, symbolize justice. I think it's safe for me to say we all want to see justice in our community and mercy for ourselves. Yet there seems to be these opposing sides of love and justice. We tend to consider love and justice as necessary opposites, like defense and prosecution in a court of law. Love defends justice accuses but there's a beautiful connection between justice and mercy and they tie into the greatest commandments to love God and others mm -hmm. and living a life of justice is the fulfillment of these commandments loving your neighbor as yourself treating others as you want to be treated sum up examples of justice the kind of everyday care and concern that does justice to all members of our community. God has taught us to see love and justice and justice and love. Justice that does right by everyone works to restore relationships with a compassionate God. Jesus personifies what it means to do justice to one another in love, the kind of justice that gives fullness of meaning to the truth, impartiality, and moral authority. Jesus showed the heart and spirit of the law and demonstrated that restorative justice is far more than punishment. With God's help and in the name of Jesus Christ, may our courts be right by the heart of our Father while seeking to do justice to the desperate needs of the vulnerable people of Flint and Genesee County. May our courts, which are duty-bound to uphold the law, be faithful to their own calling. May our courts mirror the heart of our Father, see love in justice, see justice in love, but even more importantly, show love by justice, show justice in love. May our courts do what it takes to value another person's life in a way that not only does justice to the rights of both victim and accused, but also to the Lord himself. And may our courts long to show mercy and forgiveness while using wise and loving consequences when needed for the good of the people of Flint and Genesee County. God bless you all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Now, as he mentioned, his mother had a deep, deep desire to reach those inmates. So I'd like every one of you to turn around and reach your hand towards the jail. I'm going to play her song. This is from 2011. You might hear her singing in the background.
Sister Janet. That's pretty special, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, then uh, it's time to uh, dig in, as it were. We're going to start praying in earnest, and I want to first welcome up Pastor Apostle Lonnie Brown. He's from Kingdom of Heaven Ministries. He's been with us every year, and we sure appreciate him. Welcome, Apostle Brown. such an integral part of what we're doing here. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Uh, weather has not permitted, pandemic permitted, yeah. but Jesus is Lord. Yeah. So, so can we just Amen. Let's all stand. wonderful city. This is a city, Father, that was born out of tremendous vision. The founding fathers of this thriving metropolis put forth 
a industrial community for which they thought would exist forever. Dreams of these men who came from the East, who planted automotive and mechanical industry that increased the lives of so many citizens spilled over into the families, homes, and communities of its citizens. We have lived the benefit of the spoils of a thriving industrial economy. Father, unfortunately, a dark disposition of some of the leaders in this thriving community has forced a serious set of dark disappointment in our families, finances, education, art, and government. Violence in our streets has replaced the viability of our neighborhoods. This unfortunate situation is a direct result of our abandoning the altars of God, thus prohibiting your divine influence to be pervasive in our cities, families, and communities. We are here today on the lawn of City Hall asking for forgiveness. We, the City Fathers, are in full recognition of how prayer can reverse this dark invasion of the hope of our citizens. Father, you said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, heal their, sin, heal their land, and forgive their sin. So, Father, we're here today as we're preparing ourselves during this post-pandemic time to rise from the rubbles of our own discontent and disobedience. Father, it is with that thought in mind we say to you today, forgive our domestic community and civic disobedience. Now, Father, I'm asking that you would extend bountiful, limitless, eternal, supernatural supply of increase that is necessary for the godly growth that you desire to see in this metropolis once again. Father, I'm asking you today for the eternally beneficial state created by your person, presence, power, and your kingdom, God, to promote the expansion and the advancement of your kingdom so we can all experience the enjoyment of a kingdom lifestyle. Father, would you again shine upon us with your approval and sanction? Would you show us that you are authorizing by divine permission again our civic, governmental, educational, familial, and community activity? Father, pronounce upon us divine agreement and the consent of heaven so we can move forward and overcome the disappointment of our failed history. Father, show us the future glory of the new direction that we see on the horizon. Help us to see the birthing of educational institutions that are towering over the dark disappointment. Help us see the thriving medical industry that is pushing us far into the 21st century. Help us to see the rising of new economic opportunity, bringing hope and restoration to our prosperity and posterity. Father, for this, we will be eternally grateful. Father, you said to Abraham, I will bless thee I will, I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. We, the citizens of this great city, are asking you to make us great again. And bless us. Make our name great on your behalf so that we, 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 would, we could not just be blessed, but be a blessing. We ask this in the precious, priceless, name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. That was Apostle Lonnie Brown from Kingdom of Heaven Ministries. How about that? That was powerful. Next up, we have Apostle Robert Bizzle from Victory in the Word Church, and he's going to be praying about racial unity. So let's give him a hand as he comes up. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. He is great to be praised. Hallelujah. I thank God for this opportunity here again today. Praise God. I thank God for the fine speakers. Praise God. Sheriff Mikhail son of which did a fantastic job. Pastor Lana Brown, one of my mentors. Praise God here in the city of Flint. Thank God for all of you that came out. And my assignment today is to pray against race unity, racism. 
God spoke to me some years ago and said racism is here to stay, but it do not have to be a part of us. In Galatians 3 and 8 said that neither Jew nor Greek, that neither man nor female, we all want in Christ Jesus. When Jesus was speaking to the disciples, his sister and brother came up and he said, Who is my sister and brother? He said, They that do the will of my father, they are my sister and brothers in Christ. And I like to do something kind of special today. I want these good young men to stand up, call the victory of the word church, let you know, praise God. I'm not only here praying about racism. I thank God that they are part of our ministry, praise God, in the name of Jesus. It's a blessing, praise God, and that is not all. Praise God, in the name of Jesus. Isn't God good? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking and praying you, dear Lord, for everyone in this assembly. We thank you, Lord, for the apostles. We thank you, Lord, for the Lord God, for the evangelists, for the teachers. We thank you, Lord, that we are not president, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that we love everybody in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this day of prayer chain, Lord God. That chain be my life in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that we came here on a mission, Lord God. It's a please you in the name of Jesus. I ask God that you touch everybody, every mind, every soul, every speaker. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God in this city. Glory be to God. Let somebody know that you love Jesus. Let somebody know that you love people. Let somebody know. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for Chapter Kill. I thank you, Lord, for Pastor Hunter Brown. I thank you, Lord, that we got somebody walking over the jail. Glory be to God. God got his angels. Glory be to God. When your son and your daughter go to jail, glory to God, they got somebody. It's been the blood of Jesus over their life. And you got a body. Or stuck out of the boat, Conde. He grows Sunday. Rock out of the boat. He rolls out of the boat. Hallelujah. 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 I said, God is good. I said, God is good. He is greater to be praised. Hallelujah. This time that year, I was starting by a beat. But I said, the, the devil would not give me this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are here. They change the city. They change the murderers and the drug addicts. Hallelujah. This is my assignment. I come to the low side. He's all on my side. In Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Ministries, yeah. and he's going to be praying for our businesses and for prosperity in the city of Flint. Yeah. Let's welcome Pastor Ty. Anybody love God on today? Yeah. Come on, make some noise if you love Jesus on today. Come on, I should be able to tell how great your God is by how great your praise is. Anybody who believes in blessing the Lord at all times? And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hey Amen. I'm going to do my part and get out the way. But after all this, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, where do I fit in at. But I thank God for being God over my life. And my assignment is to pray for prosperity and for businesses of this city. So if you'd be so kind, you don't have to grab hands, but link up or nudge somebody. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there will I be in the midst. Father, we link up on today for our city, O oh God. We lift up our city, 
We speak to the economy of our city up and down this great street in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your word says that a cattle on a thousand hill belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. You said that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. We declare that on the front end of today. We shall not want any substance. We shall not want any finances. We shall not want any healing. Why? Because the Lord is our shepherd. That is our declaration today. That is our decree. Your word says that we can decree a thing and so shall it be established. Hallelujah today, oh God. Hallelujah today. We look unto you, oh God, for you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Your word says no good thing will you withhold from us. God, we turn to you today, Lord. We speak to every business, oh God. We speak to every entrepreneur in the name of Jesus that the spirit of creativity will live in this city again. In the name of Jesus, we release your blessings. We release it right now in the name of Jesus. Make us good stewards of what you've blessed us with. In the name of Jesus, we speak to every pocketbook. We speak to every wallet. We speak to every cupboard, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For you are the El Shaddai. You're the God of more than enough. Your word declares that we won't have room enough to receive. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, pour out on us on today. Pour out on us, oh God, like never before, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we declare a divine release on today. In the name of Jesus, release in our ministries, oh God, that we won't have to worry about how to keep the lights on, God. A release, oh God, in every business, Lord, that they flourish, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We turn to you, oh God, as a maid looks to her mistress and a servant to her master. Our eyes are fixed upon you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For we believe, oh God, hallelujah, be it unto us as according to our faith. Bless us in our coming in. Bless us in our going out, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we'll be ever so mindful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, thank God, amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise right there. Great job, Pastor Ty. Winds of Restoration Ministry. Our next uh, prayer leader is going to be Pastor Ernesto Alanis. He's from... Flint City Church. Yeah. And I just love his spirit. I welcome him on his way up. He's going to be praying uh, against the violence and crime in the city. Yeah. If you Google Flint, Michigan, the first thing you see is the watercress. And the second thing you see is crime. I was born in the city in 1980. In the 80s, we had we had murder capital of America three of the ten years. When I tell people, I'm from Michigan, before 2015 or 14, it was always, well, how bad is it? Then it was, how's the water? Our city's reputation for being a violent place. Today, I want to pray against the violence and crime in our city. As I sought the Lord on this prayer, one verse came to mind. It's the book of Ephesians, written by the Apostle Paul, where he said, let the thief no longer steal, but let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let the thief no longer steal, but let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let us pray together. Father, first we pray. We pray for the thieves, for the murderers. Many of the young and the old in our city that do these crimes, they know your name. And they've been so robbed of hope, so beat down in this world, they have come to believe that the only answer is evil, to take, to hurt. Lord God, I ask you to grab the hearts of those who have been lied to. Remind them of who you are and who they are in you. They have not been created in the image of this world. They have been made in your image. Lord, take the hearts of those across the street sitting in the cells and remind them there is a better way. Lord, we pray.
brave, and we ask you to grab the hearts of those who have used crime to advance themselves, and as you grab their hearts, give them a heart to do honest work with their own hands. And for this, we have to pray, Lord, because in our city, there's not a lot of honest work to be done. In our city, Lord, we look for the jobs, and where are they? They're 50 miles south. God, I ask that you would give our leaders wisdom to, inv to, to invite, to promote business that our people, our young ones, our children, our brothers and sisters, they would have hope of opportunity, of jobs for those who want to do honest labor. There would be honest labor to be done. Lord, bring the businesses. Bring those willing to invest and to be patient and to go for the long haul for our city. Yeah, right. That the thief may have honest work to do. Why? So they may have something to share with anyone in need. For those that are here, Lord. For those of us who grew up here. Those of us who have moved here. Yeah. A lot of us will be victims of crime. Yeah. We'll lose. We'll lose our catalytic converters. We'll, our houses will be broken into. As we as we are victims of crime give us a heart not to run away but to stay in this place for the sake of the future if everybody runs if everybody runs lord then where is your light and where is your witness give us a heart to stay here give our business owners and our give our people the heart to say this is my city and we will not give it to violence we will not give it to crime oh lord we desire to see your name brought and made great in this land once again. So, Father, let us suffer well. Let us believe for that new season that you can bring. Let us that are here who have means share with anyone who has need. Lord, we love you. We need you. We pray for our city. In Christ's name, we ask all these things. Amen. Pastor Nesso, Flint City Church. Well, we've all had to suffer through the COVID crisis. We've all suffered through the water crisis. And I think we need to pray for our health. The city and its health is, is vital. The children have been greatly affected by that water crisis. And my heart goes out to them. I know Pastor Rhonda deals with, with these children. And uh, right now I want to welcome Pastor Willie Kidd from Holy Ghost Ministries. And he's going to pray over that topic. Welcome. Amen. Well, one scripture comes to mind. Second uh, Chronicles 7, 13. He said, if I set up heaven, that there be no rain. Or send locusts uh, to the vow of the land, or send pestilence among my people. He said, If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. He said, Then I'll hear from heaven and forgive your sin and heal the land. And so, so many times, what's going on is that we're not fasting and praying and calling upon the name of the Lord. God is calling us even as a nation, as a city, and as individuals. God is calling for us to call mightily upon his name. And we must begin to understand what it is to afflict our soul. God is saying, listen, you have to turn your plate down. You have to come closer up unto me. I began to cry mightily unto the Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we need for you to step in in the name of Jesus. We need for you to move by your anointing, by your healing power, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, look on this water crisis. Look on the children that was affected by it. Father, the COVID-19. God, we understand no violence can happen in the city except God allowed. And so, God, we ask God for you to forgive us. Forgive us for our shortcomings. 
Forgive us for playing with God, not taking God serious. Move by your presence, God, in the name of Jesus. We need God right now. Right now, God, we need for you to move. We need for you to come through, oh God. Father, we yield at your feet in the name of Jesus. We are called by your name. Father, we need for you to do it. You're in control. There is no God like you. Do it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And amen. Pastor Willie Dead from Holy Ghost Church. Next we have from Encounter Church, Pastor Chris Forestek. And he's going to be praying for the lost in our city. And he's going to be praying for you, the evangelists in our city. Okay? Welcome, Pastor Chris. All right. So the, I'm sitting back here thinking, and God's doing something new, isn't he, church? He's bringing something new to the city. He's bringing something new to the surrounding areas. He's doing something amazing and wonderful. And uh, as I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about Matthew 28, 19, right? Go into the nations and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey my commands, right? And we take that and we start thinking about, well, globally, right? But I want you to think locally. Your nation is your backyard, church. It's your neighbor. It's everyone you come in contact with. And there are lost people. I mean, Pastor Nesto just talked about this with the crime in this city, with everything that's taking place. There are lost people abundant here in this city. Just searching and longing for someone, one of God's children, to come and bring the word. That's you, the evangelist. That's you. And it's through the power of God, through the power of Christ, the blood of the Lamb, that people will be transformed by your presentation of the gospel to the people. Love and truth. Let us pray for the lost here in our city. Father God, we thank you today for meeting us here. We thank you today for bringing us here into this wonderful city. We know there's great things here or else we wouldn't be here. We know there's great things that you're doing here, or else we wouldn't be here today. So God, Father, we thank you that you have brought all of your apostles, your pastors, your preachers, your teachers, your evangelists, your servants. God, we thank you for bringing us together to come and pray over this wonderful city, Lord. We recognize that there are lost, there are blind, there are deaf, there are hurting, there are people who are so far from you, they don't even know your name. And God, we pray that you would bring us the wisdom and the words to say, the things to do, that those lost, blind, deaf, and so far gone people would come to know you in a real way, that they would drop to their knees and praise your heavenly name, God. We pray today that change would take place in this community, that we would see that an abundance of love just spreading out inside of your people, that this community would be reunited together in unity for you, unify the body, break down barriers, break down strongholds, release the chains that have bound us for so long, Lord. We are seeking that you would transform a people for your goodness, Lord, for your glory, Lord, for your miraculous signs and wonders, Lord, for your kingdom, God. And I pray right now that you would put your hand upon these evangelists, Lord, as they step out and we drive down these streets praying and we go back into our homes praying and we go back into our streets praying and watching change take place because of your mighty power, Lord, because of your great love, Lord, because of your great mercy on your people, Lord, and we thank you for that. You say that when we seek, you will not turn us away. You will bring us into your fold, Lord. So we are seeking, we are knocking, we are asking today, God, God, open the doors of the heavens and pour down on us like fire, God. Bring your Holy Spirit for us. And let us see the lost saved. Relationships mended and made whole. And the unification of your people for the kingdom right here on earth as it is in heaven. Lord. We thank you for all this today in the matchless holy name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. Pastor Chris from Encounter Church. And look at us today. We're a diverse crowd. 
all different congregations, all different cultures represented here. Unity, unity in the spirit, because we agree Flint needs the church to step up, don't we? And today praying for unity, we have Minister Vicki Ziegler from Grace Tabernacle. Welcome Minister Vicki as you come. Minister, you need to become more as a child. 
Now, some people ain't going to believe that. But I'm always reminded of this one story I heard of this man. He was out working on his house. He had went up on the edge of his roof. He climbed up the ladder, and he had his little girl without the yard playing. So after he climbed up on the roof, he came down to get something else. He comes back in a few minutes. He looks around. He can't find his little girl. Where's his little girl at? He, he can't find her. He looks up. She's climbed up the ladder. She's on the edge of the roof. And now he says, what am I going to do? So he climbs up the ladder. When he climbs up the ladder, she takes off running. It's fun to her. It's just a game. So he comes back down. No, 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 no. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Because my wife is going to kill me. But he said, what am I going to do? And he walks over where she's at. And he says, come in, baby. And you know what she does? She takes flight. She let go, she releases, she jumps, because Papa said, come here. What I'm saying to you is we will yield ourselves to our belief that God is our God, that he is our Father. And he say, jump, take flight. So said we become as little children. What are some of the attributes of a child? Fearless, resilient, forgiving. They got imagination. They're pure heart. They're happy. They're loving, they're hopeful, all the things we need to exemplify as being a child of God. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the gift of children. Father, we ask you to surround them with your love, your mercy, your kindness, all the attributes that is in you, Lord, surround them with that. Lord, we ask you to protect our children. Father, there is a wave of violence that is even touching our schools, Lord, where those that come and do great evil in the name of we don't even understand why, Lord, but they come. Father, protect our children in Jesus' name. Watch over them as they walk through these hallways, Lord. Keep them, Lord. And Father, we have an infusion of things from the social media, Lord. We have children who are even now sexually confused to who they are, Lord. Help them and help us, Lord, to create a wall surrounding them, to help protect them, Lord, that they they are protected while they need to develop themselves, Lord. Help us to be those people, Lord. I'm asking you, Heavenly Father, to forgive us. Forgive us for what we have not done. Father, forgive us for our lack of work, where we missed the boat, where we let these gaps be in there, Lord, where our children started to fall through the cracks, Lord, where we got more interested in making more money, Lord, than rather than what our children were doing. Forgive us for that, oh God. Forgive us for the evil words we have spoken in their ears, like, Lord, where they've heard prejudice, where they've heard bigotry, they've heard just, just, just vile things, Lord, come from our mouths. Father, forgive us for that. And help us, Lord, to develop into that person, develop into these people who will surround them, who will protect them, who will help them to know what it is to walk in accordance to your will. Let them know that there is prosperity, there is life, there is joy, there is peace in following you, Lord. Let us be living examples of that. Father, for our children, their minds are so, so innocent, Lord. They absorb so many things so easily. Lord, protect them that they don't hear those foul things. The Lord, just let their ears take it in and let it go through the other side, Lord. Protect them from those vile imaginations that will try to come and take them by force. But Lord, let us stand strong around them. Let us be that example of what true love, what true energy, what true peace looks like in Jesus' name. And Father, let us not do it just for our little group. But Father, let us be a wall around and a shield around all those, Lord, we encounter in Jesus' name. Let us represent the true love of who our God is in Jesus' name. Father, for the teachers and the others who stand daily trying to inspire our young people, Lord, those that have a heart for you, Lord, let them have that wisdom and that, that, that nuance of, of, of new ideas, Lord, that would help pierce through all the darkness in Jesus' name. Father, for those children who happen to be in households where there aren't any people to pray for them, Lord, because no one there prays, Father, let us reach out our prayers beyond our own walls, Lord, for those who do not have those people who will protect them and reach out and surround them, Lord. Let us be the people you call us to be in Jesus' name. Help us to move beyond our walls, Lord, that we can do what is necessary, Lord, that our children are protected. Lord, we know we sing and heard a song, Lord, our children, our future, but Lord, we know that you use our children. Let us, in our own way, Lord, revert back to our childhood. Help us to forget some of the things we've learned along the way, Lord, and begin to just operate in that pure faith, Lord. When you say, come, Father, we just raise our arms and just leap unto you, Lord, and say, here I am. So, Lord, just bless us right now. 
Bless our children. Surround our children. Keep our children. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Pastor Jimmy Whitaker from Bethesda Temple. Well, now that he's prayed for our children, our next speaker, he's going to be praying for our families and for the saints at large. So I want you to welcome Pastor Kyle Bailey from Centerpoint Church. Pastor Kyle. Amen. When I arrived here two years ago, I became a believer. This is what I told the congregation when I was preaching to them for the first time. And uh, they looked at me with confusion. What do you mean you just became a believer? And I said, I became a believer in something called the Great Flint Revival. Hey! Amen. Because when I arrived here, that was the word the Lord gave me, that he has something we call the Great Flint Revival for this county. Amen. And so God wants us to understand the victory that we already have in Jesus. And so we need to be praying today for the renewing of the mind. We need to have our mind renewed to understand that Jesus has already given us the victory and that we're called to simply carry it out. Amen. Love never fails. And if we want to walk in victory, we have to walk in love. And over the past few weeks, the Lord has been, had me in Ephesians chapter 3, praying out that beautiful prayer of the apostle there. And I believe that's what the Lord wants us to pray through today. So I'm just going to begin to pray through that prayer, and we'll pause and begin to kind of elaborate on certain parts, and, and then uh, we'll move on to the next uh, pastor. So if you have a Bible, you can go there in Ephesians 3. And if you have a Bible app, you can do that. It's going to pick up there in verse 14 of Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe we should do that if you feel led. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Oh, that's victory, Lord. Father, we're praying for the victory of your might to rise up in the church. Father, would you strengthen us with the same might that fell upon Samson in the days of old. Lord, where he was able to rise up and bring a plundering to the camp of the enemy. Father, we recognize that, Lord, you are calling us to be Samsons in our generation, to rise up in the might of the Lord that Jesus Christ has purchased for us to have at the cross. So, Father, we pray for a strengthening of the body of Christ. This tattered and bruised and broken body, Father God, Lord, it reminds me of the body of Jesus, which you have risen from the dead. And Father, it, we might face tribulation, but we are to be of good cheer, for you have overcome the world. So Father, send the spirit of might in Christ Jesus on your body, on your families, on your saints, and Lord God, let the corporate body of Christ rise up in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, for it is not by by might, our human might, nor it is by our human power, but it is by the Spirit of Almighty God. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us and gives life to our mortal bodies. So we speak life and victory over the saints. We speak life and victory over families, God, the family unit, Father God, the enemy has tried to steal and to kill and to destroy, but we speak life. We speak life in abundance, Father God. Prodigal sons and daughters come home in the name of Jesus. Broken families be healed in the name of Jesus. We have the solution. We have the antidote. In the name of that solution is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have been reconciled to God. So reconciled 
reconcile families, reconcile husbands and wives, reconcile sons and daughters. Bring the ministry of reconciliation, God, to Genesee County in the mighty name of Jesus, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. We got to stop there because it's one thing for Christ to visit your heart. And it's another thing for Christ to dwell in your heart. I'm talking about an abiding. I'm talking about where Christ's presence is constant and continuous and consistent. Father, we need maturity in the body. We need maturity because there's victory in maturity. Lord, where we're not just coming to you, Lord, with foxhole prayers, where when there's a hard time, we finally start praying, but God, we're letting you dwell in our heart by faith. You, we, we're allowing there to be a consistency of your presence in our life. Father, will you bring the body to maturity? The writer of Hebrews said, many of you must might be teachers by now, yet I have to reteach you the elementary truths of the word. Father, uh, get us off of milk and put us on the meat. Lord, let us rise up into the victory that is in maturity that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith. That we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height. To know the love of Christ which patches knowledge. That we may be filled with all the fullness of Almighty God. We know that love never fails. And Lord, it's a love that passes knowledge. But we can know some of it because we know in part and we see in part and we prophesy in part. So Lord God, let an impartation of your love be given to us afresh. Lord, we've been living in a pandemic mindset where we're afraid of each other, where, Lord God, we've been running around being confused, Lord God, being beat down by the enemy. We're going to rise up in the victory of love, no longer looking at our fellow human as a threat to our health, but as an object of your affection, as an object of your affection, as another image of God that we are called to love in the name of Jesus. Now, to him... Who is able to do exceeding abundantly, above and beyond, all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. To all generations forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Centerpoint Church. Hallelujah. Got a special treat for you now. Amen. If you didn't know it, Franklin Graham will be in Flint Thursday. Yes. Next Thursday. What a special treat. Could have been anywhere in the United States. Chose Flint. Why? All these souls around town, you know them. You know all these souls. You need to bring them to Crossroads Village on Thursday night. 7 o'clock. Don't miss it. There's going to be a multitude of souls born into the kingdom as a result of that rally that's going on. And this afternoon, we have a, a special guest from Billy Graham Ministries, Minister Cynthia Scott. And she is going to come, and she, as an outsider, she... She's going to pray for the heart of Flint. All right, so welcome, Minister Cynthia Scott. Create in the heart of Flint a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit here. Thank you. Create in us a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit in every one of your people in Flint. Father, thank you. Lord, we lift up the brokenhearted in Flint. So much pain. And you are the one that binds up the brokenhearted. So we pray, Lord, that you would bind up the broken heart of Flint, yes, yes. wherever there's sadness, wherever there's despair, hopelessness, Lord, bind up the broken hearted. 
Father, I pray that you would lay your heart over the heart of Flint, yes. over every person in yes. this city, yes. believers and unbelievers, Lord, lay your heart, yes. your heart, Thank you. and all that's in it over the hearts of the people of Flint. Yes. And Father, for your people, I pray that you would give them the heart of a lion, yes. the lion of Judah, Yes. And that your people yes, with the heart of the Lion of Judah will rise up and roar in this hour. Yes. And that the enemy yes. will flee. Yes. That he will no longer have dominion here anywhere. Yes. Not on any street. Yes. Not in any home. Yes. Not in any church. Not in any school or government right. building. Lord, you are the Lion of Judah. Yes. Your heart is what we want. And I pray that every one of your people will rise up in the boldness that is in you, Lord, yes. that is in your heart, the, lion, the heart of the Lion of Judah. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Cynthia Scott from Billy Graham Ministry. Isn't it great that she came here this morning to address us? And isn't it great that God Loves You Tour it's going to stop in Flint on Thursday. Franklin Graham has his heart set on Flint Thursday. Please go. Please go if you can. Now look at y'all. This is this is such a great day. I am so appreciative that you're all here. Pastor Sherry back there, I see you. Pastor Burrell here. We've got Pastors Tom and Rhonda. I don't know if I missed any other pastors here, but we really appreciate your attendance today. This is just the beginning. As we wrap up the rally here today, we want to make sure that uh, if you're coming back, we're going to have some door prizes. Uh, our brother Lewis Spears, where is he? Oh, there he is. All right, if you didn't get a raffle ticket, see Brother Lewis before you uh, depart, or Sister Gail. And if you'll want to join us in a prayer ride, we've got these flags that we can stick on your car, and we would like you to ride around town Pray in all the corners of the city. There's a lot of construction. The downtown's a little bit blocked off. But if, if you can drive around town and proclaim the name of Jesus for the next hour, that would be great. Now, we're going to meet back here at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, about 50 minutes from now. We're going to have cider and donuts and coffee and some fellowship. And we're going to do the raffle drawing, okay? Any questions? I don't have any questions, but I'm so excited after hearing these ministers preach. How about you? All right. what, a, what a great uh, ministry today with, with all these leaders. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful for the time they took out of their schedule to be here. And today's ministry carries on. After the prayer ride and the raffle, we're going to dismiss everyone to go to their prayer sites around town where you can do outreach as the Holy Spirit leads you. So, again... My applause to all of you. Thank you for coming out, and that concludes the rally today. Come up front and get a flag if you're going to go on the prayer ride. Right. I've got a box of them here. He's, he's a great man of God. Isaiah 59. For your future at Mott Community College.
from the Royal Priesthood Ministries. My husband is Pastor Harold W. Britton Sr., uh, 2518 Delaware, Royal Priesthood Ministries. And I've been coming to Prayer Chain Day, oh my goodness, it has been over 10 years. And uh, actually, Janet and I were friends. And um, I just thank God for her inspiration of prayer and having a prayer chain day for our city. And I already see the shifting and the changing in our city. And I'm so excited because the glory of God is here. He visited us today. And I am so excited to see everything come together in unity as it already has started. So continue to be blessed, Flint, Michigan, because we are victorious in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm Joseph Millette from Victory in the Word Church, and I'm at my first prayer chain, and it means a lot because a lot of people are getting touched and changed lives, and it's nice to pray as a whole, you know, church, because we're one church, whether you're from different churches or not, we're all still one church in Jesus Christ. Hi, I'm Rhonda Matuzo from Riverside Tabernacle, soon to become Every Nation Church. Um, about six years ago, Geneva Spears in, invited me to Prayer Chain Day, and God was working something in my heart. I was reading John 17, and I see Jesus praying some of his last prayers, and his prayer was that his church body would be one just as he is one with the Father. And I love what happens on Prayer Chain Day. Churches from all across our city come together and lift him up and pray for our city. Join us, it is something special that happens in Flint, Michigan, and we'd like you to be a part of it. Hi, I'm Gail Morden. And I belong to Grace Tabernacle Church on Carpenter Road. And I've been a participant with um, Prayer Chain Day for at least 13 years. And I'm just in love with this day. My mother used to tease me about it. She said, you just live for Prayer Chain Day. I said, I sure do. Because it's always been a passion of mine since I've been involved. And I like to give out lunch and clothes and shoes and coats and all that good stuff make it a whole day and uh, that's what we're supposed to do it's a day of atonement and Geneva and Sister Paquel they thought about us doing something for the poor so we started feeding them and giving them clothing and whatever and praying with them so it's just an exciting day for me Great. All right, Brother Beck, how'd it go? We had a great day. We're so thankful for all the ministers that came out, all the, the lay people. We had a great day at City Hall today. The prayers were powerful, and we moved the heavens. We expect great things from this. We're looking forward to seeing everybody at City Hall again next year on September the 30th. Saturday, September 30th, noon on the front lawn of City Hall. It's going to be bigger and better, and it's all for Jesus. Amen. Nice. Okay.
Are you over the age of 25 and you haven't graduated from high school? Are you over the age of 30 and you're having problems with basic reading and math calculations and you need to return to school but you're afraid of the traditional classroom setting? Are you over the age of 50 and you're having problems finding a job because you don't know how to use a computer? Well, don't worry, Chi Adult Skills Center is here for you. We work with adults aged 25 years of age and older in basic reading, math, GD prep, and computer training. So please, give us a call today because Chia is here to help you. Good morning, good people. <laughs> Listen, Paul the Handsome One Hearing here uh, with a, a special opportunity for you. Uh, actually, that was given to us. YouTube has invited us to participate in the sponsorship program. So they are, have set up uh, some kind of system to allow you guys to support the channel. Uh, there should be a button down here somewhere. Join, support, sponsor. Uh, click it. <laughs> See what it says. Uh, I, I want to assure you that all the content that we always do uh, is still going to remain for you. don't have to be a sponsor or a supporter to enjoy what we do here at Spectacle Productions. But you can be extra appreciated if you do. All right? Down here. Join, sponsor, see what happens, all right? Um, we're also considering starting a new show for those that do choose to sponsor, and we're calling it The Meeting After The Meeting. And we'll allow you to be guests and hosts and help come up with the content and not, maybe make you a star. I do not know, all right? But rest assured, I'm enjoying the life I'm living just until I can live the life I'll enjoy and your support and our sponsorship will get us even closer to that. Remember, there'll be more, as always, after this. And, and after this, this is your life. Go out and live it. Peace.